You know, everyone in this room seemed to sleep. Seriously, seemed to sleep. Everyone stand up. Stand up. Guys, the t-shirt game is in the mind. It really is in the mind. Here's why. As Matt talked about, right, it, you just need one or two winning ideas, and you can run that over and over and over and over again. We had one coaching student who had 51 losers. Campaign 52, he took the one idea. He's made over 45 grand the last two months with that one idea, spinning it off and off and off. You gotta build your belief. I want everyone to say, I'm a master t-shirt marketer. Okay, sit down, let's go, we're gonna get live now. <laughs> Guys, build your belief. You build your belief because you have a lot of failure in this business, a lot of failure. Am I right or right, Glenn? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay, good. Now, the most important thing when it comes to Facebook advertising is targeting. And you'll be amazed at how lazy people are about targeting or how lazy they're about digging deep and, and, and scaling those winners. This is so critically important, because let me repeat something we just said earlier. It is much easier to run a winning shirt over and over and over and over and over again, winter, spring, summer, fall, dig deep into targeting, than it is to go out and find a new winner. You know, it's on Teespring, apparently 20% of the shirts are the ones that tip, and of the 20% that tip, maybe 5 to 10% really make you money. So, who wants to go out and keep searching for new winners? Who would like rather take your winning shirt and find new targets and run it over and over and make more money? Which would you prefer? Making more, make more money off the winning idea? Yeah. Who wants to be a master targeter? Yeah. Okay. Guys, and now, that, now there's a lot of people in this room who are successful with targeting, and, you may, and some of this is going to be basic for you. But keep in mind, I want you to know something. I've had coaching students come to me and say, hey, I made $20,000 last month in Teespring, right? And here's the shirts. And I say, but it's died down. That, that, that shirt's not selling anymore. And I say, no way. Let's, let's dig in. Let's see who you targeted. Let's see if we can go farther with this. And then sure enough, 95% of the time, they can't go farther. But, so even if the beginning of this presentation is completely you know, basic for some of you, don't worry. At the very end of this presentation, I'm going to go over two advanced, very advanced techniques for targeting that most people in this room will not get. But this is for the high level people, okay? Now, the th techniques I'm gonna go over at the end, if you don't get those, don't worry about it. That's for the high level people, right? So, but now we're gonna focus on something for everyone in the room first, and then we'll get into some more advanced stuff at the end. Cool? Awesome, all right. Now, let's think about targeting, okay? Anyone be my scribe? Scribe? Okay, thank you, Sanjay. Appreciate you. Now we're going to use the screen here in a few minutes, but I just want to go ahead and, yeah. Yeah, thanks. But the first thing I want to talk about is the, is the concept of targeting. And the reason why we got to get the concept is before we dig into details, you got to understand the big picture. Okay, let's pretend that we're going to be targeting and we're going to be searching for shirts in the golf niche. And people who are experienced marketers, please don't answer this question. This is more to, for the newbies, okay? What keywords, what words or phrases would you go after if you wanted to sell a shirt in the golf niche? Any guesses? Come on, are we alive? Come on, golf. Golf. Okay, yeah, golf. What other keywords are we going to go after? What other keywords would you think of? Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. The brand? Sorry, what? Brand. Hole in one? Golf magazine. Okay. Okay. Okay, now, good. That's good enough. Okay. Are they right? Is this good targeting? Absolutely not. <laughs> the question is, we got to send, okay, this is crappy targeting. You're going to get bad results with this. But the question is to understand why. This is the key thing. Why is this not good? Any ideas? Too broad. Any other ideas? That's right. I mean, golf is a pretty common thing, right? Golf magazine's a pretty big, well-known brand name. So is Tiger Woods. People who are casually interested in golf will still go and, and make comments or likes on those pages or whatever, right? You're not digging deep to the most passionate people. That's number one. So you're number one, you're not targeting, here's problem number one. Can you write this down? Problem number one, you're not targeting the number one most passionate buyers. There's other problems. 
Problem number two, any guesses? Any guesses? How about you, sir? Nothing of anything. Any other problems anyone can guess? Guys, who wants to be interactive? You get more out of it if you interact. Quiet. Too large, too large an audience. Too large an audience. Yeah, that's the problem. Good. Oh, Tiger Woods could be like people who fancy him as well. You know, that's, right. that's right. People yeah, who, who are not passionate. passionate yeah. That's right. They're not, they're not really real fans. There's no of him, right? Um, too large audience, yes, that's right. Okay, and what else? It could be just fans like watching the sport but not playing the actual game, so it's a way to talk about the product. We already have that, not passionate. Okay. Good, all right. What else? Well, there's nothing, there's nothing really I'm really looking for here right now. Anyone, anyone can guess? What is, what is your comp, let me give you guys a hint. What is your competition doing? What is majority of the competition who, one, especially online, has not taken any marketing training, right? Number two, they're lazy. They're just trying to make a quick buck. So what are they doing? They're targeting these people. So you're actually in a more competitive market for worse buyers. You might as well take your money and light it on fire. Who likes to burn their money? Any? Anyone wants to burn their, burn their cash? No? Okay. Neither do I. Okay, so let's, now let's dig into, I'm going to give out a cheat sheet here in a, in a minute, but before we get into that, I want to just, just play a little, keep, let's play a game here. The way Facebook advertising works is just like Google advertising or YouTube PPC or anything. It's, it's about segmentations, okay? And in Facebook, they call it interest. It's the same thing. It's segmentation, keyword marketing. It's the same thing. This is the ter term interest, okay? Same idea, it's keywords, right? Let's start throwing out some stuff. If we were gonna market in the golf niche, we have a golf t-shirt, right? So this, um, this girl loves her man who plays golf, whatever the t-shirt is, right? Let's start brainstorming. What are some things we'd wanna target in the golf niche? I'll give you a hint, first one, associations, okay? Any other? Equipment, equipment beautiful. Equipment manufacturers, awesome idea, good. I love targeting equipment. Yeah, golf course names. That's right, golf course names. Beautiful. Well done. More. There's more. Come on. Brand. Forms. Forms. Boom. I love forms, guys. I always go for forms. And you know why? Very good. Who said that? Where's that man? <laughs> Matt, give him um, six months of access to Massive Marketing Free. Serious, come talk to me after. Great job. Forms. Forms are so beautiful. Why? The why is forms so beautiful? These people go onto a form, they have to register their email, their name, their phone number, right? Woo I mean, come on, they went through all that trouble and they're participating in the form. Guys, I got good news and bad news about forms. Not all forms on market are targetable. In fact, you have to really dig to find forms that are targetable on Facebook. But when you do, Cha-ching! It's a gold mine. <laughs> it really is. I love forms. Okay, any other guesses? Online stores. Sorry? Online stores. Online stores. Beautiful. Online stores, websites. Yes, beautiful. Any, any other guesses? Magazines. Magazines. Good. Glenn, you, and you're a master, so give us one. <laughs> We're still talking golf. Right? Yeah, and, and, yeah, golf. That's right. See, there's one here, Chris. Uh, me and Glenn, we disagree on the max events. Events. So I like to target events. Glenn doesn't. Okay. I, I go after events. It just depends. I just test it. So, but events are good. Yeah. Events, competitions, good. Dog events, you don't like. Okay. Well, what else? What else? Maybe lesser known athletes. Lesser known athletes. Not the big ones. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that smart thinking. I, I was planning on giving away two. Two massive markers on this presentation. We already found them. So these two guys, six months. Okay, listen. This is so critically important, okay? Can you say that one more time? What's your name? Uh, 
Daniel, say that one more time for everyone. Come up here. Come here. Uh, lesser known athletes. Lesser known athletes or lesser known celebrities in that given niche. Again, this is about, I'm trying to teach you how to think, not what to think, okay? So that's right. That's absolutely 100% dead on right. But why? The key in here is why. Because once you understand how to think about targeting, then you, this keyword sheet I'm going to give you, it will just be a tool that you can use, and you can think way beyond that, which is why we're going through this process. I'm not just going to hand you some ideas. Why? Why lesser known? Why not go after the bigger people? Good, exactly. Go ahead and say it again, loud, big for everyone to hear it. The people who like the lesser known uh, sports players are going to be more passionate about that than the people who like <coughs> That's right. So if we were to go on, and we're talking about golf, if we were to go on to, to <coughs> you know, we're targeting in the UK or United States, wherever, England, sorry, France, Germany, right? We're targeting the global PGA network, right? PGA. I would go on and I'd type in the uh, top 10 PGA golfers. I'm going to skip one, two, and three for sure. I'm not going to target them, the top 10 <coughs> ranked people. Why? And the reason I answer is because they are in the TV news all the time. People who are not serious golf fans will like and know these people. I want to dig deeper, four, five, six, maybe even lower down the chain. You want to go farther and less? I like the picture of Paul like that one because targeting celebs is still targeting spectators, not players. Mm. And it, it works for me, so. I mean, the guys, there's different ways to skill, skin a cat, so this is what works for me. This is what's working for us, so. Anyway, cool. All right, so any other ideas? Let's throw out one or two more, and then we'll put the target cheat sheet. Book writers. Book writers. Bo blogs and books, yep. One of my favorite search terms is top 10 Amazon books about XYZ. And I'll start trying to search the authors or the book titles. Again, not all of these will target. This is the one thing about, that stinks about targeting on Facebook is when you're digging into these, and you're going to discover that a lot of these are not targetable. But, but the ones you do find, these are things that people, other people are not targeting, right? And so you are playing a different market, right? I mean, one of the reasons why, I mean, Matt gave the example. You know, we had a shirt that sold, I think, I don't know the exact number. It was like two or 3,000, something like that. Anyway, it said, because we were, Ran it many, many times in different um, styles and said, I shoot people with a camera and sometimes cut off their heads, right? <laughs> Photographer shirt, right? People were selling similar, similar shirts, very similar shirts, but we were outselling them by tons because we were digging deep on the targeting, right? We weren't competing with them. Key, key word, we were not competing with them because we were targeting different. Okay, cool. Thank you, Sunday. Appreciate that. Awesome. Okay, now. Um, we need the target and cheat sheet. Help pass this around, guys. Everyone get one. Here you go. Make sure. Guys, can pass it around to everyone. Make sure everyone gets one. Everyone got a targeting cheat sheet. Okay. This is not meant to be an exhaustive list. Okay. This is by no means, shape or form, an exhaustive list. There are many more keywords you can go after. This is just to, me to me a, a mental guide to help get you get, get started and thinking about targets, right? So, um, you know, so when you go for associations, right, you could go and you could start searching for associations in the golf. So you could search like the most popular golf associations in America and you start digging deep. Them. And the, the, odds, the truth is, as I wrote here in the notes, a lot will not be targetable. They won't be. So this is a bit of what I call sweat equity. What do I mean by sweat equity? Just digging and digging and digging, taking the time and effort. Now, why would you want to keep digging and digging to the most important concept of the t-shirt business? It is much easier 
to find new targets and keep expanding and going on a winning shirt than it is to go out and find a new winning shirt. So what would you rather spend your time on? Digging for new targets or digging for new shirts? Uh, new targets. So guys, all, so associations, yeah, a lot, a lot of them will not be targetable. But when you find the one, two, three, or four of them that are, beautiful. OK, next, magazines. Search top 10 magazines in Google. All right, Union. I guess I'm ready to. Good. So, guys, I mean, one way that you can target on Facebook, right, when you're targeting um, job, you know, title tees, T-shirts, you know, is to come here on the demographics and just come in here, for example, on the job titles and just put in, like, the name of certain employers that are related to that title or, for example, job titles, plumbers or industries, right? And this, is, this, is, this works really well. But the thing is it's got limited, it's limited, right? So you also want to go into the interests, right, here on this part here and start type in interest. And one thing that's really, really cool, and I found that's working for us, especially for job titles, is searching for unions. Plumbers union, welders union, uh, truckers union, these type of different unions. Beautiful. And again, for some reason, your competition is lazy. They're not doing this. If you just be a little bit better than them, not, you don't have to be a lot better. Just a little bit better, a little, dig a little deeper, you can win. It's really incredible. Foundation, right? And federation. Now, guys, by the way, let me know why I didn't give you guys this in the beginning. Is I wanted to teach you in the beginning how to think, because this is not an exhaustive list. There's more. That's so you got to. I wanted to teach you how to think, so you can come up with ideas on your own. Which is why I didn't give this out to you right at the beginning. Websites, blogs. You know, websites. Beautiful. Remember, again, websites are hard to find on Facebook. They, not a lot of them are there, and you have to make sure you take out the the dot. So it's Amazon. Com, not Amazon.com. I'll give you, I'm just going to hand you a target on, on a, a silver platter. We ran shirts in the cop niche. We ran shirts in the cop niche, and we're having some success using this demographic target, cops, right? And then we found some cop magazines and stuff. But then one day, my brother, who's a cop, said, have you targeted the website Police One? Com. Like, no. So this is many, many times when we first started the t-shirt business. I, told my, I showed my brother this police t-shirt. And I'm like, I go in there, and sh sure enough, Police one calm. There it is, right there. 666,000 people. <laughs> Before that we found this website, we were just, okay, we were making money in the cop niche, which is why we kept going. But I'm not going to say we were setting the world on fire. It was just 80%, 100%, all right, wasn't. But when my brother told me about that website, it jumped to like 200, 300% ROI, targeting just that one website. And the reason I'm bringing up this example, guys, is think about this. Just knowing about this one website. And the thing is, later on, if I had done my research properly, whoa, not working. Hmm? Oh, it won't work on the screen? Uh, the pointer. The pointer should work. Okay, sorry. Uh, there should be a laser pointer on this, but it's not working. Anyway, but just knowing about this one website allowed us to take a sh you know, some shirts that were doing so-so. They, they, they were going, so we would keep going with it, right? But they were, not, they were not setting the world on fire to making a lot of money on those shirts and running over again because we found one site right, that was unique, and other people were not targeting it. Right? So that shows you the power of the websites. Societies, clubs, as you said, blogs. Forms, my favorite. I love forms. Newsletters, guys. Newsletters. Books. Search Google search top 10 Amazon books about XYZ. When you just when you target the books, don't just go after the books, titles. Target the authors too. But the one thing you gotta be really careful though, guys. Let me when you go after targets with, with, with um with names, this is something that's very, very, very critical. Let's just type in any name. Let's just type in, I don't know, Gary. Gary Oldman, okay, random name, all right. This can be tricky sometimes because you may actually be targeting the wrong Gary Oldman. <laughs> this can happen. So, so because there might be people with similar names, and you think I'm targeting Gary Oldman, the author of the police book on you know, police security, right? 
but it's the wrong guy. But we don't, I don't know who this guy is. This is just, I'm just giving this merely as an example. So anyway, so what I do is I come in here, and I, and I come in, and I do check the suggestions. And I check what these suggestions are to make sure that they're related. Don't make this mistake. I have. I have made a mistake. <laughs> I'm $15. I always test at $15, right? $15 test ad. I let it run for a day, and my click through rate, I come back is like 1.2%. I'm like, what? <laughs> Something's just not right. And I'm targeting the wrong guy. I mean, same name, but the wrong guy. So, yeah, do that little extra step. You got to check that, right? Can I have some water? Thanks. Um, celebrities, yeah. This is the one I wrote dangerous. Now, some people have had success, as Glenn said, he had success with targeting bigger, well-known people. That's fine. You can test that out. There's, uh, there's, there's, there's no right or wrong way. There's uh, different ways of doing it. I personally believe it's better to go after lesser-known celebrities. You get a little bit deeper, passionate buyers. Events, competitions, tournaments, festivals, conferences, equipment. This is a beautiful one. Equipment. I mean, we're talk trying to target... Um, Shirts in the gun niche. Well, I'm trying to target right now the holster companies. The holster, you know, the, you know, put the gun in the holster, right? Think about that. Who knows the brand names of holsters? Can anyone here, this is, well, actually, this is not American. America, only in America guns are illegal, but, but, but I mean, do you guys, can you name even one holster company name, any of you? <laughs> so you see my point, right? If they like the fan page of a holster company, what do you think the odds are that they are into guns? Quite high, right? So equipment is beautiful. Guys, dig on equipment, okay? Journals, reviews. I mean, search, I could search um, top 10 gun review website. No, search for the review websites. Again, this is another one. Of those top 10 gun review websites, I'll be lucky if one of them is targetable on Facebook. But as we pointed out with police come, all I need is one. One unique, good target that no one else is going after, and cha-ching! That shirt goes from being a dud to a winner, all right? So this is really important stuff, which is why I have a lot, a lot of time. I got stuff that we can talk about later on if we do we uh, run out of talking about targeting, but the reason why I allotted this whole hour about targeting is because this is the most critical part. You can have a good, good shirt, good idea, you know, good whatever, right? Good ad copy, good pricing, everything, good design. But if you get your targeting wrong, your shirt will go nowhere. Which is why, you know, so many people get frustrated and, and they fail in this business is because they're not digging deep on the targeting. Okay, I'm just curious now. Community, now let's have a little let's have a little word game challenge. Are you willing to help us again, Sanja? Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right, so let's start. Like I said, this is not an exhaustive list. That was not the intention of this. This is a cheat sheet to get your mind rolling. Okay, let's try to get some new words. So, what what have I left off this list? Gender specific, great, thank you. Such yeah. as a woman's well armed woman. Sorry? Such as well armed, well -armed woman. Well armed women. I'm so oh, yeah, well armed women, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As in, like, whatever. Yep. Okay, so gender specific targeting, yep. Age. Age, okay, what else? I, I mean, keywords, different mm. things that we could target. Clubs. Clubs is on here. <laughs> Fan pages, yeah, I didn't put that down. Yeah, there are some fan pages that are targetable. If the fan page is big, it can become an interest. TV shows. Sorry? TV shows. TV shows, yep. TV shows. Sorry, I, what was that? Wikis. Wikis is in Wikipedia. As in wikis in general? What do you say, wiki? Wiki? I don't know what wiki is. It's like a blog, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, mini, mini, okay. Okay. Mini blog. Wiki, wikis. Mini blogs. Okay. Good. TV apps. shows. Sorry. Apps. Apps. What else we got here, guys? I would be writing down on the cheat sheet these words. You know, you can throw these in. Facebook groups. 
That's pretty hard to do now without scraping. Phrases. 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 Famous phrases. Yep. Hole in one. That's right. Phrases. Uh, some of the well known ones you might be able to. A a any others? <coughs> memes. memes. Yep, memes. Trendy news. Trendy news. Those, aren't, those don't really become interest on Facebook, right? Because it's trendy news, right? So. Universities, colleges, beautiful. I mean, if you're targeting a shirt in the cop niche, because we're talking about cops, well, what about finding, what about doing a Google search for the top 10 police academies? Now, again, of the 10, maybe one will be targetable. But it's one target that your rest of the people are not targeting. It's beautiful. Coaches. Sorry? Coaches. 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 Beautiful. Yep. This is great stuff, guys. So, uh, tutorials. tutorials. Or, uh, edu edu or education centers. Reverse I'm going to cover reverse targeting later. <laughs> That's a beautiful technique. But, by the way, yeah, he just mentioned reverse targeting, and I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, that's something we're going to talk about. If, when we talk about reverse targeting, most of you won't get that at this point, and that's cool. Don't worry about it. Just put it in your mind. But yeah, I'm going to dig in the reverse targeting when we get in the advanced section. OK, any other ideas? YouTube Sorry, what? YouTube channels. YouTube channels. Some YouTube channels might be targetable. I've never even thought of that. I mean, guys, there's things that's coming up here that I, I've been doing this Facebook stuff for a long, long time, even before I was selling t-shirts, t-shirt training courses. And you guys have come up with keyword ideas that I didn't even think of. <laughs> so I mean, that, that, this no. The point I, the point I'm trying to say is, the point I'm trying to say is that this is a never-ending list of stuff. And if you just think deeply about this, again, why? I, I, I'm, I'm going to repeat this point over and over and over again. Why do we want to do this? Why are we digging deep? Why? Less competition. Less competition. But what is another more important reason, which I just said earlier? That's right. Let's repeat that. Everyone says this. It's easier. Go, repeat it. It's easier, it's easier. to keep selling, keep selling. A, winning shirt a winning shirt than to find a new winner. I mean, seriously, guys, this is the biggest, this is the biggest mistake I think people make in this industry. I watch them, and they, they, they go on to forums like Teespring and say, I launched 30 campaigns today, new ones. And just two days ago, they were saying, I sold 300 shirts of that of XYZ shirt. Ooh I'm thinking to myself, instead of launching 30 new campaigns, don't you think you should be focusing on taking your one that you already know works and, and scaling that to the moon? He already knows that one's selling. Why is he launching 30 new campaigns? If I've got winners going, I'm spending most of my time trying to scale those and maybe launching a few new campaigns because I know these are winners. There are some of the bigger marketers out there who sell five, ten thousand. I mean, I think Trey the other day posted he, he sold seven, no, ten thousand shirts last month on seven shirts. Seven shirts, ten thousand so, units sold. Do you think he's launching thirty new campaigns every day? No, he's focusing on how he can scale his one that's already working. This is where the money is. Any other ideas? OK, good. Thank you. I think we did a very good job. How are we doing on time? What time is it? 10.52. So I've got how much? 30 minutes left? Who? who OK, so we're going to start really use going into using a, a tool called Audience Insights to do research. It's a really awesome tool that Facebook is great. I mean, it's a gift from Mark Zuckerberg. Audience Insights is a Facebook advertiser's dream come true. OK? But before I get into that, who's excited? Who thought they got some value out of that first session? OK. Everyone stand up. Energy's getting low. Guys, 
I want you to look at the person next to you and give them a high five and say, you're a master targeter. <laughs> Put your hand on your heart and say, I'm a master targeter. <laughs> okay, good. Go, sit down. Guys, you got to believe this because trust me, if you don't believe this, what is going to happen is that you're going to get frustrated because you have a lot of losers. I mean, this is a game of taking darts, okay? Taking darts, and obviously well-researched darts. I, I, I don't believe in this bad research. Or these guys who say launch 50 campaigns of that, I totally disagree with that. I teach my students, newbies, to launch, this, launch three to five well-researched, well-targeted designs a day in the beginning. Forget about 10, 20, just in throwing garbage at the wall. You want to throw three to five well thought out, well researched. I mean, when you do the research, you dig in, you find what stuff they're popular. You target it well. You really think about it and do it right. And if you do that consistently for over you know, two weeks, two, three weeks, you're going to find winners. And then you start scaling, okay? So this is a game of taking darts, well researched darts, and throwing them at the board and seeing what sticks, all right? So what that means is you're going to have frustration after frustration after frustration. And I see it all the time. People complain and they quit. They quit. So that's why I'm doing these, these mindset games with you. This is a game of the mind. It really is. It's in your mind. You've got to believe. You've got to believe I can do it. Everyone sit and say, I believe. I believe. All right, let's do it. All right, now. All right, so audience insights. We're going to continue with the golf niche because as Matt Explain, I just love using this example. And the reason I love using the golf example is because unlike a lot of niches, you know, there's so much data. And that's, that makes it really good for education purposes. Okay, so we're going to put UK. This is, by the way, this is Audience Insights. You can find it in your ads manager, okay, on the left-hand side, all right? Now, what this does is basically, is there any chance we can make this, like, a little bit... Yeah, it's just too blown up. I don't use the Mac. Someone who's got a Mac, can you help me? Here. Shift? Command. Oh. <laughs> Command? Command. Uh, yeah, that's control. Command? Oh. Command, that one, yeah. Mm, it's too. Hold on. Someone who's, who's a Mac user? Okay, thank you. Good. All right, good. All right. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, because it's way blown up. All right, so we want to put in the UK. We're, um, we're just going to focus on the Europe because we're in Europe right now, and, and this is Fabri's event, so we want to go to Europe. Guys, I've had a lot of success with, with, with uh, Europe. I, I'm, I'm honest, I don't focus on Europe as much as I do America, but there's a lot of opportunities in Europe. It's a less competitive market, so I really encourage you to dig into that. And there's different cultures. You can use different languages. I mean, we, we tried to assert in Spanish the other day for the Spain market, right? Mix, I mean, we got yeah, mixed results, so I'm not going to say that was the biggest winner. But the point is to test campaigns out in different languages and different cultures. You can find winners, OK? So we're going to put golf, right? And this is, what I, this is what I recommend that everyone do when they start in their campaigns, OK? This is one of the easiest ways to get started with your campaigns. This keyword research really comes when you start digging deep and try to scale up and look for new targets. But this is a great way, easy way to get started on any given campaign. Okay? So I come in, I put the keyword golf. Okay. Now I'm starting broad. I'm not going to be targeting golf. I'm not going to be targeting golf. I'm merely using it as a tool for research. So, then I come up here and I go, page likes, page likes, okay? Now what this does is it's going to tell me different categories, see top categories, and different pages that the, the um, people in this niche like, okay? So now when I, when I start scaling out a shirt, right, and I start, say I already have a winner in the golf niche, I might come in here and I might start running micro ads to a lot of these, like, you know, two... $2 to $5, just testing, right? A lot of these, right? But I never do that in the beginning. Only when I found the winner, then I start testing out many, many, many different niches, right? So in the beginning, I just want to see if this search is going to work. Because we know how many percent of shirts fail? 80%. Okay, so 
why would we want to waste our time on, on setting up many micro ads for a shirt we don't even is going to work? So all I want to do is set up one test PPE ad. This is what I do, okay? There's other ways to do this, right? This is what I do. This works for us. I want to set up one test PPE ad, and I cluster some good specific targets. Not broad targets, good specific targets. And I put $15 on it, I'm just testing if it works. Then I start expanding out and doing other more research to dig deeper once I know I got a winner. All right? So, but how do I find those specific targets for testing? And this is, how, this is exactly what I do. I come in here and I click on page likes. And I come down to the page likes and I click on this affinity. Affinity is very important. How likely your audience is to like a given page compared to everyone on Facebook? Now, not all these pages will be targetable, okay? And I click on affinity and I want high affinity rankings. These affinity rankings are too low. Way too low. I want affinity rankings, you know, it depends on the niche, but I mean at least at least 30, 40, 50, and it can sometimes in hundreds. I sometimes in niche I can get up to hundreds. So I start coming here and say, okay, R Rory McCoy, let's take him. I know, and then you can go ahead and even check out his fan page just to make sure it's right. Okay, yeah, he's obviously a golfer. So I come back to audience insights and I plug in, I plug in his name right here. Uh, McCoy, there we go, okay. Then I come in again, I do the same thing. I scroll down and I click the affinity rankings. I'm looking for some high affinities. These are, these are very low affinities, by the way. These are not, none of these words I'm gonna target. I'm still just digging deep to try to find more targets, more high affinity targets. These are too low. Okay, Ryder Cup, team, team Europe, I think that would be a good one. Let's just take a look at that page, make sure. Yep, good, it's, it's obviously golf. Okay, so then I come in here next and I go back to the affinity. And now I go ahead and plug in that one. Ryder Cup, Ryder Cup team. There we go. All right, so now I've got two more specific terms, okay? So I want to get rid of golf. Why do I want to get rid of this golf one? Too broad. Too broad. So I want to dig deeper. I want high affinity pages. So now I've got two more specific targets, okay? And I go ahead and get rid of golf. All right, now I go down, and now I'm getting higher affinity ratings, but still, in my opinion, not high enough. I usually want 30, 40, or 50 or higher, right? So again, I start plugging in these ones. Let's take a look at this. What's this one? Uh, Ian James. Who's this guy? Golfer. Golfer. Beautiful. Okay? So I might come in here and I start adding in Ian James. James Polar, that's beautiful. Okay, let's go down, see what we got. Okay, pretty low affinity rankings. Let's try to figure out which one would be the biggest one here. This one's, this Roy McCoy was pretty big, right? He's pretty high ranked, so let's get rid of him. Okay. Uh, Number one in the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we're just using him as a targeting. I know his name, so just using him as a, as a research tool. All right, now, we're scrolling down. Now we're starting to get some high affinities. Look at that. Ryder Team Cup Europe. Ian, look at that. Affinity. That's, that's, that's the person we're talking about. Look at this one. European Tour, 72%. Uh, Sergio Garcia, right? Do you see these high affinity rankings? Do you see that? These are more deeper targets, right? Because they're, they're more, we, we, took, we, start off, we start off with a really broad term. Then we got a little bit broad, okay? We got rid of the bigger broad. We added another specific, and then we got rid of the, uh, those three. We got rid of the next broad one. And now we've got two more specific terms that led us to even more specific terms. And we can keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. I mean, sometimes we can get affinity rankings of hundreds. I mean, hundreds. I've seen as high as four or 500. Those are very specific pages. Now, what I do, and I, I know some people do, do things differently, okay? This is what I do and it works for us. And this is just when I'm testing, not when I'm scaling, okay? I'll come in here and I'll start plugging in these ones. European tour, not, uh, these higher ones right in here and I'll create an ad, I'll create an audience. And we'll go ahead and go ahead and, we'll just go ahead and do that right now. We'll just go, let's see here. Um, we'll just talk about theory, let's actually show a live example. We'll go 25 to 54. Usually this is my test target, right? And even though my shirt might be to men or women, but if it's to women, I target just women. 
if it's the men, I also target the women as well. This is a really critical point, guys. My shirt is for men. Uh, this, this studly guy plays golf, right, whatever, right? But I'm still going to target the women in that segment as well. Why? Well, that women are more likely to buy. And so often you'll find that the women will buy it for their husband or tag their husband. So only later on, <laughs> if the data tells me that that's not working, then I'll segment the men only based on the report, data reports. Now, we're not going to go into that, but I'll just say one hint. Use your ad reports. Use them. I mean, they are your best friends. They are. They love you. Okay? Use that data, and you can really, really make profit on your ads. All right? So well, what was our targets here? Now, honestly, we, I would probably, if they were actually doing this at, at my house or whatever, I probably would go a le well, maybe one level deeper to see if I can get even, even higher affiliates. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I want to make the point. Okay? So you're looking for high affinity pages. And you want to target them, you want to cluster them to make one test ad. So I come in here and I would go, um, let's see, what was that target? What was it? Uh, European tour. Let's try that one. Let's try that was target. European tour. 2008, no. Well, it's not, is that not targetable? That's interesting. I'm surprised that's not targetable. Say that again. Maybe I did something wrong. It said uh, European tour. Look, let me just copy it. Is it is it control? I mean, function C like in the Mac? It's, uh, command. Command C. Okay. So command C. Who's enjoy Who's getting value out of this? Yes. No. Yeah. Oh, command V. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I must have something wrong here. Okay, 5,400. 5, no problem. We'll keep adding. Okay, next. Oh. Oh, yep. Oops. Thank you. No wonder it's so small. United Kingdom. There we go. Okay, now it's bigger. All right, so let's start adding these other people. Uh, this guy. I know who this guy is. So we start adding him in. Control C. Okay. I'm, gonna him in. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and do this all day. So I just want to show you one more and then we'll I'll explain to you. So what I'm gonna do, guys. All right. So we're at 72,000. Okay. This is again for testing only. Right? Scaling is a different thing. For testing, I go for an audience of 100,000 to 500,000. Just testing. Scaling is a totally different animal. Okay? I just want to know, is this shirt going to work? So I want to pile these audience in, not broad targeting, specific targeting, in, and I want to get this figure to 100,000 minimum to 500,000 maximum of very good specific targets. And I set my ad for $15. Okay. Now, what am I looking for in the fifteen dollars? One or two sales is ideal, and a lot of shares. I mean, we're talking like 70, 80 in general, right? It varies per niche. The cop niche, the shares were always very low, but we're selling like crazy. So I'm like, okay, I'll take that, right? <laughs> so, so, but so this is just a general principle. I'm looking for one or two sales, and I'm looking for a lot of shares. Why am I looking for shares? This is really, really a critical, important concept about when it comes to selling physical goods. This doesn't. This is not just teaching any physical product. Why am I looking for the shares? Organic traffic. Virality. Virality. That's right. Do, think about this. Do people share something that they don't like? No. If they're sharing it, that means you got a good product. And also, I'm looking for see if they're tagging. So if I got a, if I got Good number of shares, good number of tags, and a, and a sale or two. Ooh, we're, we're, we're talking. We're, now I'm going to start thinking about scaling. Okay? Now, here comes the hard part. And this will happen all the time. This is going to happen a lot. I and mean, it happens every day. And it's the most frustrating thing. 
You got a lot of shares. You got, say you get 15 bucks. You got, I had, I have a shirt right now the other day. Ended up selling zero, by the way, just, you know, zero, not one. It was a beer shirt, okay? We are doing some stuff in the beer niche. We spent $15, okay? I'm not joking you. We had 210 shares and no sales. A CTR of 12%. I'm thinking to myself, I want to take a gun and go, <laughs> how is that possible? That's not selling, right? So what do I do in that case? What, I, then in that case, I throw it 10 more dollars at it. I say, okay, this has got some potential, maybe. So I throw 10 more dollars at it. But $25 is my cutoff point. This is what I do, right? Other people might do it different, but this is what I do. At $25, if this has not made a sale, I don't care if it's got 10 million shares and 100 million comments, it's not selling. And there's a lot of shirts, especially because the way we market, the shirts that we run, we run, we run a lot of shirts that are, let's put this way, as Matt said, I would not want to tell my mom and dad that we're selling these shirts. <laughs> okay. And so some of them, I've actually had people, I, I, we had one shirt that was just crazy. I mean, it had a huge number of shares. On $25, we had 500 some shares and 70 comments and blah. I was like, what? So I said, I, I told my VA, I said, Floor, her name's Floor. I said, Floor, go in one by one and ask each person why they didn't buy. Well, I want to know what, what was wrong here, right? Because, I mean, that was insane. 500 shares, eight, almost 80 comments, CTR out through the roof, and no sales. And the comment was, that's funny expression, funny shirt, but only a douchebag would wear it. <laughs> okay, so, so, so that was the reply that we got, okay? What does that tell you, okay? What does, that tell, what does that tell us, right? Some shirts are funny, and they love it, but they would never be seen dead wearing it. <laughs> so, so, so that's why you got to say to yourself, at some point, you got to say, okay, it, no matter how viral this thing's gone, if it's not selling, then stop it. And $25 is my, my, <laughs> my pain threshold point. I don't want to go any farther than that. Okay, now, all right, so this is what I would do, right? Okay, now next. Assume that we got these are this is winning. This is winning, okay? So we, we put this up for 15 bucks. And, and usually what I do is, is is the next day I just increase the budget 50%. So I'll run it, I want about two days or so of data before I start really scaling. Okay? Now, um, I don't have time to go into this um, in, in, in great detail today, but let me just say that um, there's been two theories of thought in Facebook advertising. You can scale up or you can scale out. Scaling up means you just start throwing money at it, right? But the problem with that is that your Facebook starts, it takes time for Facebook to adjust its algorithm to your ad spend. So if you jump from $25 to $100 or whatever, it just starts eating your budget really fast and your cost goes up, okay? Then the other way is scaling out, which is uh, basically set up many, many micro ads. Well, we had one campaign. I mean, the, the, I shoot people something that comes ahead. We had 80 ad sets going at one time. 80 ad sets. Can you imagine how difficult, how difficult it is to manage 80 ads? <laughs> it's a nightmare. So anyway, I started playing around with this idea, and I thought to myself, how could, why can't these have to be mutually exclusive? Isn't there a way that I can scale out? Because I want to scale out, because I want to throw more money at it, but I can scale up at the same time and not increase my ad spend. And to make a long story short, myself and I asked a few of my private coach students to test it, and we did some tests. And we discovered that 50% increase on every ad does not result in a large spike in ad, ad cost um, so per engagement or per click, whatever you're doing. So if you increase your ad budget today 50% every day on that one ad set, you're not going to see a huge increase. So that allows you to scale out more reasonably. You can scale out maybe 5, 10 ads and then increase 50% of each one that's winning and you're still spending a lot more money. Now, I don't have time to go into this because I did a whole like 20 or 30 minute video on this that explains it in great detail, but the point is you don't want to scale up too fast. You want to scale out and up, okay? So the next day, I'm going to throw another more, little more money at it, make sure that it's working, because just one day is not enough. You need two or three days. But let's just say I've gone through three days now, OK? I've gone 50% increase every day. It keeps selling. It's working. I've got a winner. Definitely got a winner. Now is the time. So I come back in here, and I take these targets that I'm working. And this is the, this is the part. And I come back, and I put them in, paste them in the audience insights. And this is a major pain activity, but it works. Why well, I want it paste. There you go. What happened there? Okay. Okay. 
All right, let's just go ahead and throw one of these in here. Sergio. Because it, it doesn't. What am I supposed to do in here? Sergio. Gio. Garcia. There we go. All right. So now, guys, I got a winner. It's been three days. I've got some data. I've been scaling my ad up 50% per day. Now I've got three days of data, and it's selling consistently. So I've got a winner. So now I want to scale. And one thing to scale, is, and this is, this is a real pain, pain, but I literally will come in here and see all these different, different um, categories, one by one. And sometimes it can be a lot. It can be 20, 30. Okay? And I see all these different... Um, Finney's, I come in here, I open this up, and I, if it's low, less, less than like say 30 or 40, I don't do it. But I'll start making micro ads, okay? Three to five dollar tests, just to see if it's going to work or not. And it can be many ads. And, and for, for this, I want an audience of at least 50,000. So if I got a small, let's just say I got, so I want 50,000 per ad. And the reason why I want 50K is because as I increase my ad spend on that, if it's, the audience is too small, it gets expensive. So I find 50,000 to be pre 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 pretty good. So what I do now is, so I start setting up micro ads, many micro ads. But if, it's if the audience is less than 50,000, then I combine two or three smaller ones. Say one's got 15,000, one's got 10,000, one's got 20,000. I'll combine those into one ad. So I set up one ad per interest on the ones that are more than 50,000. So if it's 50K plus, one, uh, 50K plus, one ad. If it's less than, so 50K minus, I cluster. Do you understand what I mean by cluster? OK. So what I'm doing now, and then also go into Google, and I grab my little targeting cheat sheet. <laughs> and I start searching top 10 golf associations. We love this stuff. What? We love this stuff. Guys, I love this. Because if you just become a master targeter, you can crush the competition. You absolutely can. You absolutely can. Guys, I want you to know something. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to brag on anything, but... So many of my coaching students who told me, oh, I'm making a lot of money on Facebook. I got all these winners, and, and, but they're done. They're exhausted. And I, and I say to them on the first session, I say, no way. No way. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back over those. I'd be willing to bet you you can get more out of that. And most of the time, the answer is yes. Most of the time. And these guys are, you guys are making money already, right? They're just not digging deep. They're not thinking deep enough. This is the key. Woohoo! Who's excited? OK, all right. I got, we're going to go into what we said. So just go into Google and start searching for these things. And again, they're not all going to be targetable. OK, how much time do I have? OK, give me. I promise to target, I promise to talk about one advanced technique you know, for the guys who are advanced here. And, I'm, and I want this. So can I have just three more minutes? Oh, good, perfect. All right. This concept is called reverse targeting. Okay? This is advanced thing. If you guys don't get this and aren't ready to use it, don't. Because this can cost you a lot of money if you fail at this. Okay? But it actually works beautifully if you know what you're doing. Okay? Uh, Sanjay, are you familiar with reverse targeting? Sorry? Have you used reverse targeting? Yes. All right, beautiful. All right. Someone who wants to be my scribe. Thanks, Brad. Okay. All right. Can, so what's reverse targeting? It's when you, when you use a uh, sort of marketing shirt that it says basically, uh, for example, uh, <coughs> uh, what have you done? If it, if it says, for example, <coughs> or target the wife. That's right. The wife is going to buy. She's the buyer. That's right. So basically what you're doing is, just write reverse targeting. Uh, okay, again, if, you, if you're not ready for this, don't worry about this, OK? Because this can be costly if you don't do it right, and you also want to test it. And in general, our ROIs are lower on this than, than on the normal direct targeting. Okay? But this is a way to really expand your shirt after you've really exhausted all your targets. So I, I've gone through and I've targeted all the different golf people related. Oh, I mean, I really dug deep. 
and it's just dead. Well, now I can revive it with re reverse targeting. Okay. So what this is is basically you target people who are related to the person that you want to buy, you want to wear the shirt. So you target someone who is somehow related to the person you want to actually wear the shirt. So, so target a related person. And let me give you an example. Okay? This, is, this is when I really discovered the power of reverse targeting. I just posted this yesterday because I didn't want to show the fan page it's actually on. But we just, ex what, what is that? What is Okay. This is an old fan page we used to use. We're back, we're, we're now, honestly, I recommend you use generic. No, no, don't use generic pages. I recommend you use niche pages. We're not using generic pages anymore. But in the, back in the day when we first started this business, that's what we were doing. I recommend now you go ahead and launch a, gen, a niche page when you launch a shirt. And the reason why is because if that shirt takes off, you can start to build an asset. But anyway, this is back when I first started this business, and I didn't understand that concept at the beginning. But I saw all the likes and the engagement. I thought, wait a minute, why am I not building pages? Right? So, but anyway, this is an old page. I still use it for training purposes. And I, I didn't want to show the actual fan page where the shirt is on, so I went ahead and reposted it yesterday. So this is a shirt that we ran, and it got stolen, and people that ran it, okay? We sold a lot of them directly to the military wives. It says, military wife, you know, you can read it. I'm not supposed to swear, so, <laughs> so <laughs> you can read what it says, right? So we sold a lot targeting the actual wives of military people. But it, after about three or four runs, five runs, I don't remember the exact number, it just died. I mean, it literally died. It was like, <laughs> what happened? But then it occurred to me, and this is when I discovered reverse targeting. This is many, many months ago. I could target people who are in the US Army. This is exactly what I did. I went to the ads manager, and so I'm, I'm going to change the United States because this is, the, this is a real example, and I, I want to demonstrate this concept. Sorry about that. OK, so I went to the ads manager, and I, and I started typing in, uh, um, uh, let's see here, work, employers, US Army. U.S. Army. Okay, and then I did the other branches like N Navy, Mil you know, Marines, whatever, right? And then I came next and I put relationship status, uh, married. This is exactly what I did, guys. This is real live what I did. Now I'm, I'm demonstrating a demo after the fact, but this is exactly what I did. And I put in the other branches. I put in U.S. Navy, uh, Ar Air Force, right, all of them, right? Then I made an ad just like this that said, tag your wife or pick one up here. Oh, sorry. Tag your wife or pick one up for her. So here, I don't remember. I didn't actually use that right. But anyway, so basically, <laughs> anyway I, mess, I made a mistake. So I just did this last night quickly before the demonstration after a few beers, so forgive me. But anyway, I, said, I said, tag your wife or pick one up here, right? And then just release, not available. So, so see, this is even archives. This is an old campaign. We're not even running anymore, right? But what happened was, amazingly, it worked. And I was like, wow. <laughs> this is the first reverse targeting cut that we ever did. Now, honestly, I remember it was like 85% ROI. So it was not the great ROI we were getting we were targeting directly. So typically, I found that this doesn't result in, in the best ROI compared to the direct. But the point is, though, again, what's easier? I'm going home. What's easier? Reselling a winner. So I already had a winner. I already had the shirt that I know was working. So instead of searching for new targets, I just said, okay, how can I creatively, you know, find a way to retarget these people? And so even though the ROI was not as good as it was before in the direct selling, right, it was still selling. I was still making money off the same shirt, right? And I can rerun this now as a hoodie, as a T-shirt. And, and actually, the reason why I chose to give this example is this one got really proliferated. I mean, I've it's all over the place now. <laughs> so, everyone, so I'm not going to probably run this one ever again, but also, it's, this points out a point of digging deep on research. Okay, so we have a military page, and I was um, searching on Zazzle for, for designs, okay? Zazzle is a, has a plethora of designs. Matt challenged me to throw in the word plethora in this, this is from a movie. So I threw it in. Plethora of designs. Now, I found this, I remember this, I found this particular shirt on page nine when I searched military t-shirts. <laughs> page nine. Do you understand what I mean by that? I went to the Zazzle. 
I went into Zazzle. I typed in military shirts. Bang. I know for a fact I was the first one to run this one because I never saw it before on Teespring before, and then suddenly they're all over the place. And we were the first ones making money with this. So, and I literally scrolled through and I, on page nine. See all these pages? I found this on page nine. And I thought to myself, that is so funny. That expression is so funny, but I'm not seeing it anywhere. This has not been properly marketed. The problem is not the shirt. The problem is it hasn't been properly promoted. And it worked. To the point where people copied it all over the place. Okay? So I'm, this is about targeting, but the same, it's also an example of digging deep on your research. Your competition is lazy. Go deeper into these sites and dig deeper. Page 9, 10, 11, 12, you can find ideas that were just, they were great ideas, profound, funny shirts, but they were just never properly promoted. Okay, so let me give you one more example of reverse targeting that we did. Um, it, it was not as successful as this one, but I wanted this to give the example because it still made money. It made money, but it was not, I think it was like 30% ROI, so I actually quit it after a few days. But it still gives you another, I, but I want to give you this example because it gives you ideas. Okay, the whole point is to give you ideas, right? So we had a pilot shirt that was making some sales, okay? But we ran out of targets, targeting pilots. And actually, a pilot is a very narrow niche on Facebook. There's not enough of them. So I decided to try to target people who work at United Airlines, who work at American Airlines, who work at the airline. And I said, hey, is your friend a pilot? Tag him in this post. And actually, it worked in the sense we made a profit. It just wasn't so impressive that I decided to stop it. But I just want you to think out of the box, right? Reverse targeting, if done right, can work. But reverse targeting is also a double-edged sword. It can cost you a lot of money if it fails. So I always test very small budget with reverse targeting. I start off with $5. Direct targeting, I start off with 15. Reverse targeting, I start off with five because it's a double-edged sword. It can be a total disaster. I look, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the CTR. CTR is pretty decent. Yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah, at that point, I'm not looking for a, a lot of clicks, a lot of shares. I'm just looking to see if it's getting some positive traction. And I would say 5% or more. Then, OK, now I double. Now I go $10. And then go up from that point. I, I judge, $5 is not enough to really judge on clicks and shares. But what I'm judging at that point is, is the CTR decent? Is the CTR decent? That tells me maybe this might work. And by the way, if you're just like complete, like reverse targeting CTR, this, as I said, this particular part of this presentation is for guys like Sanjay and Glenn and these other advanced marketers. Right? I wanted to give them something. <coughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, everyone, stand up. <laughs> Put your hand on your heart. Say, I'm a master targeter. Thanks, guys. <laughs>